Conrad Lander. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. A decade ago, that chant rose up from this plaza from Zuccotti Park where we're standing and echoed all around the world. Um, and you know, something really powerful happened in that moment at Occupy Wall Street here in Zuccotti Park. Um, because so many people knew in the wake of the financial crisis that we were living in a rigged system, that we had bailed out banks who had uh, taken the world economy off a cliff, but were failing to pay attention to the working families who uh, needed government to be on their side. People knew it, but so many people didn't find the courage to say it or the language to make it plain and build big movement around it. But that's what happened here. Something surprising happened that people would not have expected to emerge. And yet when it did, because it was courageous and because it had just bold, clear, plain common sense messaging, uh, it reverberated far beyond this space. And that chant, we are the 99%, made a lot of sense to people. This was not just some you know, small group of, uh, you know, um, it was warmer then, so we weren't quite as cold, but some you know, small group of activists, it reflected what people knew the change was we needed in our economy. And I gotta say, Jumani, of course, uh, Working Families Party was here early on, uh, and Jumani was here throughout on the people's mic. And I think that Jumani has, and one of the reasons I'm so proud to support him, uh, is that he's got a very similar approach. Uh, he has the courage to say what is in the back of people's minds, but folks aren't saying, and he's got a way of that resonates with working families, white, black, Latino, people who are struggling, and who know the system has been rigged against them, and that even though common sense says they're supposed to just take it, that it does not have to be that way. I sometimes uh, joke with Kamani that a, a lot of people get, get comfortable with injustice. You wake up day after day after day with families facing eviction, or folks facing police brutality, or jobs that don't pay enough to feed your family. And it's because it's day after day after day, a lot of people wind up accepting that that's the way things are and the way things have to be. Jumani wakes up every day angry about injustice and then willing to speak courageously about it and then able to connect with people and build a movement. So then it just seems plain common sense that you shouldn't get kicked out of your home because your landlord would like to double the rent, or that you shouldn't have to be paid a wage that's not enough to feed your family, or that you can't have a system of public safety uh, that respects your civil rights, that strengthens your community, and that keeps you safe. Um, and time and time and time again, uh, on the Fair Chance Act, on the Community Safety Act, uh, Jumani has been the one to speak up say what was on folks' minds, but nobody was saying, and then to do it in a way that so many people could connect to, even if they didn't start from Jumani's politics. And I just want to underline that in the space of protecting tenants. You know, before Jumani was in politics, he was the executive director of Tenants and Neighbors, and he, you know, uh, helped play a role in starting to lead the fight that resulted in changing the rent laws. And, you know, for a long time, a lot of people were just like, this is the way it has to be. You know, if your landlord says, you got to go, you got to go. Um, yes, once upon a time, we protected tenants, but over time that had been eroded. And the result was tens of thousands of people were evicted into homelessness because the rent laws did not protect them. But Make the Road showed up. NYCC showed up. The Working Ooh. Families Party showed up. Jumani Williams showed up. Citizen Action showed up. Uh, Jumani got arrested in civil disobedience outside of Governor Cuomo's office, and lo and behold, uh, a large majority of New Yorkers said, absolutely, we need to close the loopholes in our rent laws to protect people from being evicted unfairly, and thanks to the 2019 changes in the rent laws, tens of thousands of New York families have avoided eviction, are able to stay in their homes. So let's hear it for that word. Yeah. Yeah.
but we need to do that again because now we're seeing that that set of tenants who aren't protected by the rent laws are being evicted by pandemic profiteers right. and in Brooklyn over a hundred buildings bought up by this uh, predatory real estate company Greenbrook Partners who throw people out of their homes the day they buy the building regardless of whether they're protected by the rent laws and that's why all New Yorkers the vast majority know we need good cause eviction protections right. to prevent people from being kicked out of their homes by pandemic profiteers and we need a governor who knows and has the courage, the common sense, and the connection to make sure we stand up for good cause evictions and we prevent our neighbors who are complying with their lease, trying to make it in this pandemic economy from being evicted. So how about a governor that'll make sure we pass good cause evictions? And for that reason and so many others, I am so proud to be an endorser of Kamani Williams for governor and delighted to join all the groups here today for doing it. Uh, we started with uh, show me what democracy looks like. That one we still do, but we are the 99%. We don't do enough, so let's do that one. All right, ready? So like this. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. We may not get 99% of the vote for Jumani Williams in the primary, but let's get to 51. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Uh, all right, it's now my pleasure call up one of the stalwart groups of the Working Families Party, fighting for working class New Yorkers all across the city, New York Communities for Change. 